As we gather in this place, we acknowledge the traditional caretakers of this land upon which we meet as the keepers of ancient knowledge and whose cultures and customs continue to nurture the land today. We acknowledge their deep spiritual connections to this land and we thank them for the care they have shown over it for thousands of years. We also pay our respects to elders past, present and those who are rising up to be leaders of tomorrow. And as we light the community candle, we're told that Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the flame of this candle is a reminder to us that the light of Jesus is to shine in and through us for all the world to see. call to worship. In the midst of darkness and chaos, God of invention, in the fury and darkness, God of invention, the world filled with trees, blue skies, and fluffy white clouds. In the bush, God stood and In a world of rainstorms and wildlife, and grasses blowing in the breeze. In a world teeming with billions of people. God imagined you and God imagined me. We are created in the image of God. God Let us worship with the same imagination as the Creator. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing our first song for this morning's service. All are welcome.
all are welcome. So welcome to you all. Welcome to those of you who are physically present here today and all of those who are joining us online via Zoom. Welcome to you as we come together to share in this time of worship in this place and beyond wherever you may be. To young, to old, to those who are not so sure of where they are, to everyone, welcome. May God's blessings be with you and may God uplift you in this time as we come together to worship. Let's pray. Loving God, who conceived life, originates ingenuity, embraces individuality, welcomes everyone, celebrates diversity, encourages unity, offers stillness, gifts simplicity, lavishes compassion. We seek your ways. Living Jesus, who breathes our air, walks our streets, feels our pain, sheds tears, enjoys company, bubbles with laughter, holds our hands. We seek your compassion. Gentle spirit who strengthens fragile spirits, shelters the suffering, respires life and hope, transforms all sorrow, binds broken hearts, and sets captives free. We seek your wisdom. Beautiful trinity of love, for your presence in our lives, for your comfort and company, for shaking us out of tired routines and calling us ever to follow you, then blessing our journey with unexpected discoveries, expanding our horizons, tendering endless encouragement and travelling with us. We give you thanks and praise as we join together in this time of worship. Amen. And as we share a sign of peace with each other, I remind you to just stay where you are in your, your seats and share a sign of peace to those around you in whatever way you wish to do so. So the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. I invite you to join me again as we sing our next song, Lord, let me see, see more and more. And again, I invite you to stand if you are able as we sing.
going to lead us in the singing of the Psalms. Well, our red books, so you'll probably remember it, but you don't have the music in front of you, but um, we'll sing it all alternately, as is the tradition in Psalms being written in couplets with a responsive feeling that we can sing to each other. So thanks Helen. Helen will sing the first line and then we respond with the second line which which I'll lead you for. Thanks Helen. <laughs> from Proverbs 8, 1 to 4, and then 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call and my cry is all who live. Then from 22, the Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him, like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, playing before him always, 
playing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. Now, our Gospel reading is John 16 to 12 to 15. I has, still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the end of the reading. If I was to take a leaf out of the books of many other ministers today, I would have today off. Trinity Sunday. It's a notorious day where we get people to fill in on the pulpit because it's such a difficult thing to talk about and describe. Today we celebrate that God is three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But of course, if you search through your Bible, you won't see any mention that the God is three in one, that God is the Trinity. There's references to it, and there's references we've had from our readings today that kind of hint of the Trinity, of this way we try to describe the holy other, if you like, and our understanding of who God is, what God is. Now, theologian and biblical scholar, Dr. Will Gaffney, says she doesn't believe in the Trinity, doesn't believe in the Trinity at all. She said she's also glad she lives today because a couple of thousand years ago, if she'd made that declaration, she'd be dead. But she doesn't doesn't say she doesn't believe in the essence of the Trinity, if you like, the community of the Trinity, of how it works together in, in some ways. She just says that she doesn't believe that it says enough. It's too limiting. It limits our understanding of who God is and what God is about too much. And I guess if I was asked to you, how would you define God and what is your understanding of the Trinity? It's a great possibility we would have many differing answers of how we describe this holy other this holy presence that we seek to be a part of and understand how we name it. Now, Jesus, of course, we are told throughout the Gospels, uses many names to describe God, if you like. He uses examples of someone who goes, a farmer goes and spreads seeds recklessly, not caring where they land. He talks about a widow or a woman who needs bread. And he talks constantly about how God is like a a shepherd, if you like. That when one sheep is lost, he leaves the others in search in order to find the others. And uses so many different names to represent God and to try and identify and describe what God is like for us. And in a way, that's what our attempt is in describing God as Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in our reading from John, we hear 
these words that Jesus, we're told, says. He says that, I have many more things to tell you, but you're not able to bear them at this time. He says these words to his disciples, to his followers, as part of his farewell discourse. And I think in many ways, as we reflect upon those words, for me at least, it captures the essence of the heart of what the Trinity is about and the way we try to describe what God is like. This God has many things to tell us. There's many things that we don't understand and at times we're not able to get our minds around them. There's so much more we have yet to learn, to grow, to understand who God is, how we describe God, how we be in relationship with God and how God connects with us. But I don't think we do very well in trying to be open to different ways of seeing God, of looking at God, a feeling of God's presence around us. The Christian church has been around for around about 2,000 years now. And so often we get so caught up in our doctrines We get so caught up in our literal understanding of of how we see things in our biblical interpretation and the way we believe people should act and respond to that interpretation that we fail to see beyond. We fail to see and hear God's voice to us and God's presence with us seems to me that we can so often get caught up in saying that, you know, these are the doctrines we had so long ago and this is what we state as the truth and we must stick to it. It's good enough for our ancestors so it should be good enough for us today. All we need to do is believe and everything will be okay. But I don't think that's what Jesus kind of gets at in the essence of those words. I've got so much more to say to you. He knows he's going away. He knows he's about to leave his disciples, his followers. And he says, you know what? We've only just begun this journey. There's so much you need to know. There's so much more that you need to be taught. Your understanding of who God is and what God is about and how to describe God is so small, so minute. I've got so much more to tell you, but you're just not able, you're just not ready yet. And then he says that he he will send or an essence of God, if you like, the spirit of God, the spirit of truth that will guide them in their understanding in some way to help them in their journey. So on this Trinity Sunday, what is God trying to say to us? How are we describing God in our lives and how do we describe God to others? Are we limiting people by our own definitions, by our own understandings, by our own doctrines and ways of seeing things? Or are we being open and willing to be open to the many things that God still has to say to us and show to us? In what ways is God showing himself or herself to us today? How do we see God? Throughout the scriptures we hear that God is described as the one who heals, the one who comforts, the one who walks with us, the one who challenges us. 
the one who needs healing as well. It's Trinity Sunday. May we always be open to see that God is so much bigger than we can ever imagine. May we never be limited by trying to name God and number God as such. But take hold of the essence of what the Trinity is. The God who creates, the God whose face we see in Jesus Christ, and the God whose presence is with us in the Holy Spirit here and now. And as we do, may those who journey with us find that God is so much more than they ever imagined, so much more than they ever expected, and so much more than they could ever hope for, and realize that God calls them, that God loves them, in whatever form or shape God may take. May we be encouraged. May we never allow our doctrines and our literal ways of thinking stop us from experiencing God. May we never think we have all the answers. May we always be open to hear the many things that God still has to teach us so that we can go on from strength to strength and others can journey with us. Amen. going to open up for any thoughts or reflections upon the Trinity or our way of seeing God or what you've heard. And feel free to disagree completely. It's okay. Thanks very much, Gary. I really appreciate your open approach to the question. Um, And... uh, as we had an interesting discussion last week actually on Pentecost Sunday about the Holy Spirit and the Trinity and um, I'm not sure but I do have some serious doubts about the, about the concept so really appreciated your, your openness and then the wise people who devised the lectionary included the Proverbs um, yep. reading about wisdom expressed in the feminine form Uh, created at the beginning of God's work, the first of his acts, and then later described as a master worker. And I thought, oh, that's theologically intriguing, absolutely intriguing, because it seems to me that that's not in the Trinity at all. Maybe, I mean, maybe some people could interpret that as the Holy Spirit, but I think that's far too neat. I like the awkwardness of of including that reading, so I'm fascinated by that. My question is, um, has your understanding of the Trinity changed over the years or as you've thought about it? Or um, I'm just intrigued. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm putting you in a difficult spot. No, not at all. Um, Yes. I mean, I very much share the views of Dr. Will Gaffney. I, I see when we put doctrines together, our understanding of how things should be, we restrict God so much. And for me, the Trinity is, is so much more. Um, it, it's, the na- it's our way of kind of trying to describe God and naming God, our understanding of what God is like and, and how God represents God's self to us in many ways. But it is, for me, God is so much more. We, we see we see God in the presence of those around us and in so many other ways, that, that God is more than just, just creator who, who sends and the face that we see in Jesus Christ. 
God is also in the face of those around us too. So I'm, I'm one who, who finds it difficult to just adhere to saying the Trinity defines God. I don't think we can ever define God, and I, and I think that's why in Judaism they, they don't name God, because God is unnameable, and we're trying to name and put a tent around God, if you like, and I don't think that's possible, and I think we are lesser for doing it. That's my personal feelings. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to make two, com two comments and then ask a question. The first one is, is I, I don't believe in the Trinity at all, uh, as you have suggested. I believe, I'm a Unitarian, I th I'm afraid, and so probably I'm going to be thrown out of this congregation oh, bless me, <laughs> for, for, being, for being a heretic. Um, the other thing is that, that you mentioned the, uh, the, the parable of the sower, and I've reflected on this quite a bit, and I came to the conclusion that the sower is not God, it, it's you and me who should be going out and spreading the good news. And maybe there are both ways of looking at it, I'm not denying that. Now the question, why did you choose to speak on the Trinity, which you said was such a difficult comment, concept and not speak on the wisdom literature that we had on the Proverbs. There we had w wisdom out in the streets, talking to people, telling people, and not, and, and this is what I think this congregation needs to do too. I think we need to go out and speak to the wider world, not enclose ourselves just in this little box that we're in at the moment, or perhaps it's not such a little box, but anywhere a, a box. What goes on in here, no one knows about because they can't, they, don't, they can't see through the windows because of the curtains and they can't hear us. And how are we going to spread the good news if all we do it is in here? We need as a congregation and as individuals to go out into the world. And uh, I don't see this congregation being very good at that at the moment. I'm not saying it won't be in the future but I don't think it is at the moment. And lastly, the reason I get up and ask questions is because I've been doing it all my life. <laughs> From early childhood, which was my parents, and then at my secondary school, when we had periods of discussion during the classwork, and then at university. And university survives, or the good university survive, because they have discussion at their tutorials. So, I think I'd like to stop at that point. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, thanks, Piers. Um, I don't disagree with anything you say. The reason I chose the Trinity, because I think it is one that people struggle with, and, and I talk of the other things all the time. Every time I'm here, I'm, I'm hoping you're hearing that I'm, I'm saying that, that church is not about us so much gathering together here. Church is about us being out in the world and discovering ways we can do that. I'm hoping that's coming off. If it's not, then I need to re reflect upon what I'm saying and how I'm getting it across. But for me, yeah, that is the concept of church. We, we have a responsibility, I believe, as followers of Christ or whatever uh, div divinity you may assign yourselves to, to share this wonderful world and the good news to help people to be more than they are now, to, to live in the way that um, I think God would want them to be and to, to know that they are accepted as, as well. And the reading from about wisdom is, is there because it's one of those scriptures that is used to identify an aspect of the Trinity. This, the Holy Spirit is seen as the wisdom, or as the, as the, the, the message of, of, of God in, in, this, in this place and beyond. Um, I don't disagree with anything else you've said, really. Um, and, and, and thanks for, for agreeing with me. <laughs> anything else? Anyone else? No. Well, thank you for the discussion. Thank you for your thoughts. And, and I'm sure there's thoughts going on in your minds and encourage you to continue to wrestle with those thoughts and what they mean for, for you as an individual and for us as, as a congregation and, and as people of faith. 
we're going to kind of take up the, the offering and have a prayer for the offering. So let's bring our gifts to God. Let's pray. We offer these gifts in ourselves to be blessed and used by you, loving God. Receive them and our work, our hopes, our dreams, our persistence, our voices, our questions. We dedicate ourselves to your work of justice and reconciliation and to your desire that we journey with one another as we follow in your way. May you bless us on the journey and may you bless those that we meet on the journey as well. Amen. I invite you to stand once again as we sing our next song, God of Freedom, God of Justice. of the people. Today we celebrate our triune God, one an individual, but also with the distinct individuality. The prayers of the people I've written address each element of God separately, acknowledging their spheres of influence. When I say loving God, you respond with strengthen us to your service. I'm conscious there are a few These are only a few specific prayers. At the end, there will be an opportunity for you to add your individual prayers for your own concerns. 
Father, creator of our fragile universe, forgive us for the damage we've done to your world over the centuries since you bade Adam and Eve to care for it and nurture it. Industry, technology and war have combined to do untold damage. Events such as this week's World Environment Day endeavor to raise our consciousness and teach us ways in which to prevent more damage or even to reverse it. May all ears be open to their message. May we also be alert to the increasing natural disasters which are exacerbated by the changes we have brought to the climate and the hardships this has brought to so many people. Loving God, strengthen us to your service. Jesus, Son of God, you came down to earth to share our lives and by your words and deeds, try to teach us how to care for our fellow man. You healed the sick, fed the hungry and protected the dispossessed. You urged us to love and learn to live well with each other no matter what race, colour or creed. Guide us as we try, each in our small way, to help the poor and weak among us as you did. Help us find a way to join our endeavours together with others so that our small efforts may have more impact. Loving God, strengthen us to your service. Holy Spirit, ever with us, may we be conscious of your comforting presence when the days are long and troubles press in on us. Remind us that you are always with us and strengthen us to fulfill the tasks allotted to us. May we hear your voice in the quiet moments, in crowded places, in the sounds of nature and in singing. God with three faces, thanks to you we are never alone. Loving God, strengthen us to your service. Does anybody else wish to add a prayer? I think we should be praying for the people in Ukraine and all that is going on there. It's been going on for far too long. Um, and I think we should also have a sense of joy over the Barlow family getting back to their home and may the rest of the refugees be given uh, proper treatment so that they can be part of this country and, 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 and strengthen its, its life. Thank you, Piers. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. God in heaven, in the name is to be honored. May your new community of earth be realized on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the essentials of life. Release us from our own as we also release those who are on us. You do not test us for your own. I invite you to stand once again as we join our voices together to sing our final song for this morning's service, God Who Sets Us On A Journey.
as we finish this time of service together. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. May you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.